blessing to each of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's be praying in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are and for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. Lord, we call upon your name this morning. And we ask you, Lord God, that you visit each of us, Lord God, that you speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. We ask in you, Holy Spirit, visit this place. Be in the midst of us. And we ask in you, Lord God, that you use Pastor Larry this day as your instrument, as your vessel, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, God bless you, and you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God is so good, and he is faithful. God is a faithful God. And how many of us know God has a plan, God has a destiny for each of our lives? Hallelujah. Maybe we step away from the purpose, right, somehow, but God is not change his mind. He still can redirect us and he will still will guide us. See, a lot of people sometimes say, hallelujah, saying, well, we have to walk by faith and that is so true that we do have to walk by faith. But one of the requirements to be successful in the kingdom of God, when we, to what? To hear the word, what God sent to each of us as the personally, right? And to obey. Is the obedience. The obedience, then you step in and faith. And God will back up. Because when we are stepping in in faith, when we obey what he's saying, then we always will have a victory. Because God, he has this plan. And he has that purpose for each of our lives. This is why he sent his son to bring the deliverance, to bring the redemption for each of our lives. And in him, we can always have the victory. And but the key is to learn how to hear and then obey and to step in faith, not a backwards. Sometimes people have their some desires and do things but it's not a desire of the our Heavenly Father. And this is why the discouragement come. This is why is the defeat is come, because they step into their own faith and their own desires. See, we know that God wants to bless us. He wants to restore us. But he also wants that we completely submit to his will, his purpose. Not our own will. We all have some our own desires. But to his will. God knows what we want. But he also knows what we need. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. So this is why is the prayer of our lives. Lord, not my will, but your will will be done. Reveal unto me what is your will. Reveal unto me your guidance, your direction. And if it's not of you, Lord, remove it in the name of Jesus to surrender to him in our relationships, in our business affairs, and even in our marriages, relationships. How many of you can identify that will not be making mistakes if to listen to the voice of the Lord hallelujah well today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hallelujah we just oh I mean it just is so awesome that God chose us that God gave his only and begotten son for redemption of our sin. Hallelujah. And he is alive. And this is what we celebrate today. Resurrection. And we more and more we die to our own self, to our own desires, to what we want. More and more we arise in him. But 
have this uh, decision of our heart to die to our own self, to daily, to die daily, Lord. I am dying to myself daily that you are rising me more and more. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And the power of the Holy Spirit will give us a strength to do things that is in a natural impossible. But for him, it's all things is possible in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Larry is here. He's going to minister to us today and just receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Let the impartation of the word of God will be imparted into our spirit in such a way like never been before. And not just the impartation, but the revelation of the direction through the word of God by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So before Pastor Larry is come, I wanna pray for every person who is here, those who is watching this broadcast in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. And you are loving, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak blessings over your people. We, Father, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That is not a cool accident that every person who is here and those who is watching this broadcast, we thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Let the impartation of anointing in the name of Jesus will be imparted in each of us today. Let the fresh fire, fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit will fill us, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for it. I break every assignment of the Satan over the people of God's life right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of confusion, I bind, I lose it, I break it in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done over your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Larry is here, and I believe we have a sister Jenny here too. And so, God bless you. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord today. In Jesus' name, amen. We serve a good God. The God we serve, he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask to think according to the power that works within us. Amen. Well, we have a special treat for you today. We have a couple that want to do some do a song for us. But first, let me release the anointing in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that you are here with us. Your word and your spirit, they comfort us that you have prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemy. You have anointed our head with oil and our cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall rest in the house of the Lord forever. God, I release that anointing now. Oh, Father, I sense your presence so strongly now. I release that anointing now in this place. Touch every heart, God. Those on the sound of my voice, whether it be by the internet, television, or whether it be by here in the service, God, touch, strengthen, empower them to be that person that see themselves resurrected and not being pressed down, but to see themselves lifted above their circumstances. And God, we thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we can't do this in our own strength. We look to you to strengthen us, to lead us in the guidance in all truth and to show us things to come. Hallelujah. You're welcome in this place. We invite you in now. Take your position in this service today and do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. God bless you all. We're going to have a song today, a special song today from a uh, one of our brothers, one of our sisters here. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Come on, let me get your mic ready. There you go. Praise the Lord. Now you need to kind of sit before the people can see you. Don't sit. You don't want to. Okay, let me. Yeah. 
Yeah, right? That's good. That's good, yeah. You, you know. Get the words. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. For he is worthy to be praised. Amen. As Amen. Sing, I love you more than anything.
your word is full of life. God, we honor you, we bless you, we glorify you.
Lord. Father, we honor you today. For you have risen. And you are Lord. I ask you, Father, to anoint every ear to hear. Prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red right. To write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people. For that they shall know the truth. And that the truth shall make them free. We give you praises, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, glory. Amen, amen, amen. This is a wonderful day today. Amen. And I just want to thank you all for coming out today, for being with us today on this great occasion. Amen. And I know that God, he is good to all those who have put their trust in him. And so don't think it's strange. Amen. Because God knows your every need, your every desire. He knows the things that you've been facing, the things that you're going through, the turmoil, the troubles. And he even knows about COVID. Amen. He's not blind concerning COVID. And I know there's a lot of people concerned about COVID. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ is still Lord and he's on the throne. Amen. Regardless of what COVID is, try, is, is saying to your heart. Amen. Regardless of how, how you feel. Jesus Christ, he said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So don't, let, don't allow fear to grip your heart. Amen. Stay in tune with what he is doing. And he will bring you through whatever your trial and whatever your tests are. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Had he not said it, and shall he not make it good? Everything that God has spoken, folks, is true even until today. Because he's Lord. Amen. Because he's Lord. Amen. Amen. So don't allow what the world is saying cause you to miss out on God's promises. Amen. Because the Bible says that he bore our sicknesses and he carried our diseases. And by his stripes, he said that we are healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Not might be. He said that we are. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when sickness and everything begin to afflict your body, when you know, when you first notice the symptom, that's the time you exercise authority. You don't wait till the thing grab a hold to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then you want to start exercising authority. Hallelujah. You grab, you take authority the moment you experience. When I, when I feel a headache trying to come up on me, I said, no, devil, headaches don't come from God, and I don't receive it. I command you to take your hand off me right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And before you know it, that thing is gone. Why? Because I exercise authority over it. God has given you the voice. He has given you the power of authority. Amen. Your words is what God is waiting on. Amen. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's not what you think. It's what comes out of your mouth what's going to cause you to be free of the demonic forces that is working against your health, your mind, your will, and your emotion. Amen? Mm -hmm. I remember when I was, I was uh, laying in my bed, crying like a baby, sick as I don't know what, and I needed God's resurrection power in my life. Hallelujah. I was laying down there. I didn't have no, no way, no money, no insurance, no nothing. I didn't have no way to get out of that situation. If it had not been for the Lord, go. Go. if it had not been for the Lord, I, I don't know if I would be here today. Amen. I was so much in so much pain, so much sickness. Amen. And then, glory to God, I said, Lord, I need help. And he said, get up and read your Bible. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I got ran to the door. I thought somebody was out there messing with me. <laughs> and I looked out the door. Nobody was out there. And on my way back to the bed, because I was going back to bed and having finished my pity party, I headed back to the bed. And I said, well, let me look out the window. Let me try to sneak back up there again. Nobody was out there. And so I went back, and I remember what he said. He said, get up and read your Bible. And so I got up, and I put my ironing board up, and I put my chair, put all my Bibles on the ironing board. I didn't have a desk at that time. And I sat there on my, at the ironing board, and I started reading. And I found in the book of Mark, chapter 16, as I'm reading, and it says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. 
And I said, Lord, I don't mind going, but how can I go out there bending over and not sick, hurting, like I don't know what? And, uh, and he said, keep reading. He said, keep reading. And he, and he said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They shall, if they drink any dead thing, they shall not hurt them. And right there in the latter part, verse number 18 said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. Amen. He said, they shall recover. And, and then, and then that, that, that word started jumping off the page at me. That was that resurrection power, folks. That was that resurrection power. Amen. And it started jumping off the page at me. And I, and I, and I go back and I read again. And it jumped off at me again. And I read it again. And it jumped again. You see, yeah. your resurrection power is in what you believe in the word of God. Concerning your life, concerning your situation, concerning your health. Amen. God wants to bring you to a brand new you. <laughs> Amen. He wants to renew your strength. He wants to renew your health. He wants to renew your life. Amen. Because in Christ, you become a new creature created in Christ Jesus unto good works. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Amen. God wants you to see yourself rising above your situation, above your circumstance. Remember what he said in Luke chapter 10 verse 19? Behold, I give unto you what? Power. power over all the powers of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He said that nothing shall be enemies hurt you. So why fear? Why do you allow fear to grip your heart when they talk about COVID? Amen? COVID is just a enemy that's trying to steal your peace. If he steal your peace, he can steal your joy. And if he steal your joy, he can steal your health. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. 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 So when we come to God, we must believe that he is, according to Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 6. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're not going, we're not going to run to God and thinking that, I wonder, he's, is he going to hear me? No, we're going to come to God knowing that he hear us. Because when we know that he heard us, we know that we have the petition that we have desired of him. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Jesus, he's alive, folks. I've been to the tomb. <laughs> I looked inside the tomb. I even walked around in the tomb. And folks, he's not in there. I look for him. He's not in there. He's alive. <laughs> I post that on Facebook while I was standing in the gate of the tomb. Amen. And uh, and I tell you, I, uh, when I thought about that, I said, "Wow, this is interesting. This is Resurrection Day, and many have not been to that tomb. And now I get to post with me standing in front of the tomb. Amen. I even seen Golgotha Hill, where they crucified him." Amen. Where he shed his blood for your redemption and for my redemption. Amen. Folks, everything that God did, it did it for you and me. He wanted us to experience life and that more abundantly. Your life in him is what brings you to be the person that you are. Because without him, you it's probably a chance you won't even be here today. But because of him, you're here. Amen. Remember when you was young and dumb and acting stupid and doing all these crazy things? I remember when I was doing it. I got so fed up with that life that I was ready to give up on life, period. Okay. I hated the lifestyle so much that I wanted to get away from it. Folks, when you are, see, when Christ came, when Christ gave his life, he gave his life so that you can be free from what? From sin. That you can be free from it. Amen? And I didn't understand that at the time. And so I wanted to be free, period. Because I was tired of the life that I was living. And I said, Lord, if you real, because I didn't even know if he was real. I should know what I heard people say. Okay. And I said, Lord, if you're real, then you can save me. If you're not real, and this is all life has to offer, I don't want no more parts of it. I committed suicide right there 
in that room. I fell dead. And I found myself, next thing I know, I'm standing up. And I hear these words coming out of my mouth. You'll live and not die. You'll declare the goodness of the Lord. You'll live and not die. You'll declare the goodness of the Lord. It was over and over. And from that point on, folks, I've been declaring God's word. Amen. I've been declaring God's word. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that it's not been easy all the time, but I've never quit. Amen. I never gave up. And I'm still pressing forth to the mark of the prize of the high calling. And I'm still focused on Jesus as the author, Ashatalabakai, and the finisher of my faith. You never win if you quit. And I was one, and I was about to be a quitter when God said, no, nope, it's not time. For I have work for you to do. You'll live and not die. Right. And you'll declare the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. And ever since then, folks, that song said, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Remember what he said in Isaiah chapter 6? Whom shall I send? And who will go forth? Then said I, send me. I'll go. Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8. God said, send me. I'll go. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. You see, you got to be willing to understand what God has did for you. Got, you got you to humble yourself. You got to see and know that God loved you so much. Amen. That he, see, everything that God did, it was for you. He didn't have to send his son. But he sent his son just for you. And if he didn't send it for you, I know he did for me. <laughs> well, he did for you or not, I, I can't answer for that. But I know he did it for me. A wretch like me, I was a, I was a wretch undone. Remember, past him, I was. <laughs> I was. Glory to God. Amen. But thank God I'm alive in Christ Jesus now. Amen. Not, see, not only was Jesus uh, raised on that on that third day, but he prophesied it. He prophesied it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not only was it, of course he said he says right here, he says right here in the book of Hosea. No, in the book of Psalms. In the book of, let's go to the book of Psalms, first chapter 16. In verse number 10. Mm -hmm. Let me just turn up. Amen. We're gonna, we're gonna get it. Amen. Because God wants us to arise to the occasion of who we are. <clears throat> Psalm 16. There we go. In verse 10, he said, For thou would not leave my soul in hell, neither would thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. See, Jesus knew he was going to die. And so they already prophesied what's going to happen to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. They already said what's going to happen to him. Now look at the book of Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. Amen. And verse number and verse number 2 and 3. There we go, Hosea chapter 6. Now look at verse number 2 and 3. He says, After two days will he revive us in the third day, he will do what? Raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Now, know what the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and verse number 6. And he said, and had raised us up together. And has made us do what? Sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. In Christ Jesus. So the Bible is, is showing us when Jesus rose up, so did you. Amen. Glory to God. And then he tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 22, I think. Mm -hmm. Verse number 23, verse number 22, 23, 1. He said, far above all principalities and powers and mighty dominion. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. He raised us up far above all principalities and powers and mighty dominion. So everything that the devil is trying to do to you God has already paid the price for it. 
He's already paid the price for it. In verse number 21. If, uh, if you can chapter 1, verse number 21. Far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which should come. And I like verse number 22. It says, and have put all things under his feet. All things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. For we are the church. Yes. We are the church. Everything God did by sending his son into this earth, I mean, he did it because he loved us. When we were unlovable. Matt, you ever been unlovable? <laughs> How about you, uh, Murph? We all have, haven't we? We all had our troubles in time past. But I love it that God loved us so much. You know, even when we became a Christian, a lot of us, since we have been walking with God, we've had to revisit the cross. Amen. And we had to acknowledge, God, I made a mistake, and, and I want you to forgive me. Why? Because I don't want to continue. And if I don't acknowledge it, See, he already knows it, but if I don't acknowledge it, it give, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to weigh on my heart. It's going to keep me feeling unclean, unfit, and the devil going to use that as a tool to pull me farther and farther away. So this is the purpose that we have to repent every time we make a mistake. So the devil can't use it as a tool to go to bring before God. See, I told you he couldn't do it. I told you he can't live for you. I told you he, he's going to sin again. Amen. Well, God knows you're going to sin again. But God also knows that he made an escape for your sin. And that escape was Jesus Christ. Amen. Repentance. Acknowledging your faults. Acknowledging your wrong. Not looking at them and continuing them and then thinking that it's okay. Because nothing happened to you. <laughs> Remember, you know, people make mistakes. Then they say, "Well, I thought it was going. I thought it was going to hit me with a vocal lightning, but no, I'm still here, and so I go do it again." No, you don't continue doing it. You don't continue your sin. Amen. You don't continue your sin. Jesus said, "Jesus, Jesus Himself prophesied His resurrection. He took the He took the the twelve aside and said unto them." We are going into Jerusalem. You, we can find this in the book of Matthew chapter 20. Amen. We're going into Jerusalem. And the Son of Man shall be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers and the law. And of the law. And they will condemn him to death. Amen. They will condemn him. Now I'm reading from a different translation. I'm going to turn over here to my King James Version here. Amen. And we're going to read from the King James Version. I like I, that I like those these and dows. <laughs> Amen. But God, but, but everything that Jesus has gone through, he prophesied to himself. He told he told he told him of it himself. It's not, it's not so it wasn't a secret. It wasn't a secret. And if in, a, in Matthew chapter 20, look at verse number 17. Amen. And Jesus going up, Jesus going up to Jerusalem, took the 12 disciples apart in the way and said unto them. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be what? Betrayed into, unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall do what? Rise again. See, Jesus prophesied his own death. He shall pro he prophesied his own death. Why? Because he 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 wanted you to understand that they didn't take his life. He laid down his life. And he laid it down for a purpose, not because he had to, but because he wanted to. He wanted to lay down his life. He wanted to. You know, you you had a you had a child, and your child was going hungry, and then your your neighbor had a child, and that child's going home. And then uh, he said, I love my neighbors, you know, and I don't want to see them suffer like this. And I know my child's 
But you know what? I'm on. I'm gonna spare. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna feed my neighbor because they are worthy to be saved. And and then when you take care of that neighbor, then God gonna look at your heart and say, "You mean tell me you could have fed your own, but you took care of your neighbor first? He said, "Because you gave, I'm gonna give." Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, because you spared your neighbor's son's life, God in return spares your son's life because now you have more than enough and everything that you thought that you were losing all of a sudden began to come in to your hand why because you saw the power of your seed that you gave to that neighbor that's what God said about us that's what God said about us. He said, I know that you're not worthy, but I created you and I love you. That makes you worthy. So I'm sending my son. And I could let you die, but no. I'm going to give my son to you as a ransom for your sin. And, and as my son followed his instruction, my son is going to lay down his life for you. And at the end, I'm going to gain your life. Oh, glory to God. Can y'all see this? Yes. God, God knew exactly what was going to take place. He said, I'm going to give my son for your life so that your life will become my life and I'm going to take you and I'm going to use you for my glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus prophesied his death because he knew the power of his life going into the earth as a seed. And when his life went into earth as a seed, he went into the pits of hell. He went and took back the keys. He took the stain out of death. He took the victory out of the grave. He took, he took Satan and walked, trapping him up and down in the pits of hell and made a show of him openly, trampling over him in it. And he took the keys and he come back on that third day and declared all power. All power both in heaven and earth, it's been given to me. Then he said, go. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believe it shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. He's telling us. He's giving us, that, he's giving us everything that we need. He gave us our marching orders. And he's telling us exactly how to carry out the assignment. Exactly how to carry out the sign. And on top of that, your sins, though they are many, will be forgiven. Why? Because you follow the instructions. Jesus paid the He paid the penalty for, for, for the sin of the world and was raised from the dead so we can now be forgiven of every sin. Amen. Amen. So that now we may be forgiven of every sin. Jesus was the the Son of God, and He is the way. The Bible tells us that He, in John chapter fourteen, verse number six, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus is showing us that He is the way, and the Bible tells us again in First John one nine that if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If Jesus has forgiven us our sin and still we need repent, do we still, do we still need repent? Yes. Of course we need repent. If you make a mistake, you need to repent. Well, you know, I, I, I gave Jesus my heart and I repented of my sin a long time ago and now I, I, it's under the blood now. No, if you make a mistake, you know you made a mistake and your spirit was grieved. Guess how much God's spirit will grieve when, if your spirit is grieved because of your actions. God's spirit is grieved a whole lot more than yours. See, what reason why you experienced that grief? Because you the one did it. And your spirit said, don't do that. And all of a sudden, in your heart, you know that you was wrong. You know that you was wrong. But the Father 
love you so much that when we repent, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Amen. But when we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 2 Corinthians. Don't let his resurrection power. Don't let it be a waste in your life because you've been, res you've been resurrected. You've been resurrected to life. You've been raised up. You've been caught up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the Bible said far above all principalities and powers and mighty dominion. Everything that the devil did try to destroy you, God has already took it in, 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 under He's already put un, under your power. He's already given you the power. That's why he tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse number 10. Behold, I am with you. Amen. And he said, I'll never leave you. Amen. God wants you to understand that you are valuable. You are valuable to God. Amen. You are valuable to the things of God. You are valuable to the church of God. And it should not be a surprise to you that God loves you so much that even now that he's willing to wash away all your sin. Because the Bible said, if Christ is in you, he's the what? The hope of glory. Look at uh, Romans. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse number 10. Mm -hmm. But if Christ is in you, although, he, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The spirit is life because of righteousness. The Great Commission also comes for to go, it, it come to tell, tell us to, to go and to, to make disciples. Yes. See, when when we are born again, when we are, see, I was at work the other day. I, I was at the Sam Club over in Vacaville just the other day. And remember down in the, the Sam Club over here in Sacramento when we was over there, I led this man to the Lord. He had a cross on him. And I said, do you know what that cross means? He said, he said oh, yeah, my family was Christian. <laughs> I said, what about you? He said, uh, I said, I go to church. I went to church here, but it's been a long time since I've been. I said, do you believe? I said, are you a Christian? He said, no, but my family is. And I said, you don't know what that cross really means? He said, yeah. I, that, I said, that cross, that cross represents the life that was given on that cross. And the life that was given on the cross was Jesus Christ. And he went to that cross for your sin and for my sin. And that boy looked at me. <laughs> he looked at me kind of startled, you know. He like, like, why are you telling me all this? And I said, I said, do you want to know right now that if you would die, that you would spend eternity with Jesus? He said, yes. And right there in Sam's Club, I led this young man to the Lord. Right there on the sales floor. I led him to the Lord. And the same thing happened for, uh, the other night in the Vacaville Sam Club. What night was I was over there? Friday night? Mm -hmm. Friday night. That same thing happened to another guy over there in the Sam Club. He said, I grew up Catholic. I don't need that. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Then what do you mean you don't need that? If you, if you, believe, in, you believe in Mary, right? Then why not believe in her son? So I just reversed it on him. And he said, hmm, you got a point there. And I said, hold my hand. And he held my hand. And I said, say this prayer with me. He said, in Jesus' name. And I said, and I led him through the sinner's prayer. And he said, wow. He said, wow. He said, I feel different. <laughs> and I said, what happened? He said, just like the burden just lifted off me on, on life. See, you carry the resurrection power. Everywhere you go, you can release the resurrection power because there are people that are bound for hell unless you show the resurrection power that God has placed in you. Jesus, his life, his presence is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And you might say, well, well, they won't listen to me. Who are they going to listen to that they won't listen to you? They don't have no one else because no one is going to be bold enough to say, talk to them now. Because the world is talking about, this is not good. They call everything good evil. They call everything evil good. But you know right from wrong. And that's all that matters. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ is alive in you. When you come across a hurting person, you don't look at that person, especially if God is leading you to that person. You don't turn your back on that person. That person might be at the crossroad, ready to make a decision. Or that person might be on the verge of leaving, going into eternity. And your response to the will of God concerning the conviction of your heart will determine whether or not this person is going to make it in or go to hell. I remember when my daddy was laying on his bed of affliction. My mother, my mother even, I led them both to the Lord before they died. And my, old, my, my, my brother just died, what, four years, four or five years ago? My wife and I, we, was, we went to Alabama, amen, and, and he was suffering with cancer, and uh, he's still making, he's still joking about it, but we just ministered to him. We just ministered the love of God to him. And we led him to the Lord, sitting down on the porch. You don't know when your people are going to leave. It might be your lover, it might be your lover, it might be your, your, your sister, your brother, your daddy, your mother. You don't know when their time is coming. But you know that God has given you the power to make a difference in their eternity. Eternity waits on all of us. Now, there's the eternity in two directions. There's the eternity for Christ to, be, to spend eternity with him. There's the eternity in hell to spend eternity there. You ever seen that, that thing on, on the Facebook? Jesus is up here and the devil's over here and the people are dying. They're coming. They're going into eternity. They come up there so far. Then they, they see one side. They see heaven over here. They see hell over here. They look over here, they, they make a step, then they back up, then they're going under hell. And I said, what if that was like, what would that be like today if we actually, and you know what, I believe it is like that today. Because the Bible said that the road that leads to destruction is broad and wide. Mm -hmm. And many walk therein. Mm -hmm. But the road that leads to eternal life on a few. It's broad, it's, it's narrow road. And on a few travel that road. What road are you going to travel? <laughs> Think about it. Amen. Which road are you going to travel? Because you see, and then who are you taking with you on this road when you travel? Because your brother, your neighbor, your sister, your brother, your, your, your uncles, your aunt, your nephews, your nieces and all, they're watching your life. Who are you going to take with you when you go? Are they going to be able to say something good about you? Amen. Your life can be one of the greatest witnesses that the world will ever see. Or will ever see. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember Mary Magdalene. After Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, who was first to the tomb? Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it was the, the women. Mm -hmm. And they came to the tomb and they and, 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 and they who's gonna roll the stone away? But then there was a great earthquake. And the stone was rolled away. Amen. And the stone was rolled away. And now, here they are. And they said, He's not in here. Where do you lay him? Then he see a gardener, thinking it's a gardener, but it's Jesus. And he said, Tell me, sir, where do you lay him so we, we can take him? And he said, Mary. Then the woman eyes was open. She said, Rabboni. And he said, Go and tell my disciples. You see, she was the greatest witness at that time. Your life can be 
one of the greatest witness of this time of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Remember what he said to, to Martha and Mary at the tomb of Lazarus? Lord, if you had been here, my son would not have, my, my brother would not have died. And Jesus looked at said, your, your brother shall live again. She said, oh, I know he'll live again at the resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the resurrection Amen. and the life. Amen. Though he believed in me and was dead, yet shall he live. You see, you got to understand what Christ has made possible for us today is a life beyond this earthly life that we live in. Mm -hmm. And the way we enter into this life is through Jesus Christ. Remember what he said in John, in John chapter 14, verse 1, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mentions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. That where I am, there you will be also. Whew, glory to God. And Philip said, Lord, how can we know whether I go? How can we know the way? And he said in verse number six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Folks, God had made it possible for each and every one of us to experience this resurrection power. And that's why I refuse to allow sickness to reign in my body. Un, uh, uh, how would I say this? Uh, without, without me attacking it. <laughs> Amen. Without me, without me taking a stand against it. Amen. Without a fight. Yeah. Without a fight. Amen. Because the devil, he won't do everything he can to steal your health. And you got to be willing to do what you have to do to retain your health. Sometimes you just got. to you know, people look at you like you both. I remember I was riding down the road and the devil tried to give me a headache. And my wife, she's a mental health counselor back then. <laughs> and I'm sitting there riding down the road and I, she's sitting on the side of me. I, I turned my head, I said, in the name of get the She said, who are you talking to? <laughs> I said, it's okay, don't worry about it. I'm just, and, I, and the devil, my head was still hurting. I said, get the in the name of Jesus. And uh, then all of a sudden, when I said in the name of Jesus, that thing lifted. Then she said, what are you talking to? I said, I just had to take care of something. You see, I didn't want, when the devil is messing with you, you don't want to give, uh, you don't want no place. You don't want to give no place to the enemy, and you don't want to say what's going on because someone else will start speaking against what you are fighting against, and then all of a sudden, it's going to kind of make you feel like, I need to move back. <laughs> yeah, you know. So God wants you to understand, God wants you to understand it. You've been given resurrection power. When your body comes under attack, you can speak resurrection life to that body. Amen. Amen. You can speak to that body. You command that body. You can command that body to be healed. You can command that body to be delivered. You can demand that body to be free. Amen. The doctor told me two, two and a half years ago, I went for my yearly checkup. And he said, sir, we checked your blood and all this stuff. We checked everything. We did it twice to make sure. He said, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, what's the good news? He said, the good news is you're still alive. And I said, okay, that's good news. And what's the bad news? He said, bad news is you got cancer. And I said, huh? You see how, you see how my, see how, when, when, when you get bad news, it causes your faith to go right out of the window. Y'all ever notice that? I don't care who it is. Who the bad news is concerning? Maybe you may be a loved one, but when you get that bad news, it causes your faith to fall. Amen. It causes your faith to fall. Amen. And now, and so now here I am, listen to this doctor, and I'm I'm trying to figure out, Lord, what have I done? And I didn't say nothing else to that doctor. And I just listened to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I walked outside the door and I said, God, 
<laughs> I look up and I say, God, that doctor just lied on me. He said that I have cancer. And that's not what your word says about me. Your word says in Psalm 107, verse number 20, that you sent your word, you healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Cancer is destruction. And I've been healed. I've been delivered from my destruction. And furthermore, you said in your word in Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 4 and 5, Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, spirit of God, and afflicted. God, you said you was wounded for our transgressions, you was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with your stripes, you said that we are healed. And I said, God, according to your word, I'm healed. I don't have cancer. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, I attacked this time it was spoken. I never, I went home, I never told my wife, never told anyone about what was going on. Never told no one. Not one word. I only talked to the devil and I talked to God. And then I went on a fast. I went on a fast. And as I was on the fast, and I said, God, I'm not going to take no for an answer because you said it, I believe it, and that sells it. And in that 90 days, I went back to the doctor for that, to check up on They're going to see how much advanced they had to advance. Mm -hmm. And they looked for it, and they said, we've checked your blood. And what we saw it's gone. It's no longer there. Hallelujah. And right there on the spot, I said exactly what you just said. And that doctor looked at me strange. I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that doctor jumped. <laughs> oh, you one of them, huh? I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> Amen. But let me tell you something, folks. The resurrection power in you is the power to walk in divine health. It's the power to, to rise above the circumstances in your life. You can walk in the midst of the storms of life like Jesus walked on the water. Peter got out of that boat and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the sea. And Peter jumped out of that boat and decided looking at him. Peter, you better get back up there. Oh, no, 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 no. He's doing it. I'm going to do it too. You got to be willing to do something different than everybody else. You got to be, you got to dare to be different. Because the moment you be, the moment you say, I'm going to do it, that's the moment your faith is going to ignite or it's going to drop. Mm -hmm. But when it's at night, you get ready, boy, because miracles are about to happen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Miracles are about to happen. Glory. And I believe there's miracles in this place right now. Yes. I believe there's miracles in this place right now. Because the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. I thank you right now, Lord. There are some people right now on the internet, you listen to me. And right now, the presence of God is starting to electrify. It's starting to, it's starting to swell up in the room that you're in. Amen. You may be in your car driving. You may be somewhere. I don't know where you are. But wherever you are, the presence of God right now is beginning to rest around, begin to come around you. Because you, you're starting to believe. You're starting to release your faith. You're starting to say, God, don't forget about me. This is resurrection power. T today, I believe that I receive your resurrection power. And that sickness that has been plaguing my body. Oh, no, oh, it's gone in Jesus' name. Father, I release your miracle working power right now. I release your healing. I release your, your, your oak shed that about Kai. Father, deliver your people right now from every attack that the enemy is bringing up against their bodies, their minds, their will, and their emotions. In the name of Jesus. Father, heal those deep wounds of their hearts right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. I thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Bronchitis. Someone just, God is healing someone right now. Bronchitis. Bronchitis. You've been diagnosed. It's bronchitis, but they diagnosed you with COVID. It's bronchitis. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're healed from it right now. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We praise you. 
So then, I someone have an irregular heartbeat, irregular heartbeat right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know whether you're in here or whether you're with us by the internet, but I just hear irregular heartbeat, and you've been you've been kind of concerned about that thing, and and you and you and you get nervous sometimes. You just get a you don't know how to deal with it. When you lay down at night, you hear your heart beating through your ears, and that boom boom. You can just hear it. You can hear it. And God said, in the name of Jesus, right now, I release your I release the healing power right now on your heart, upon your heart, right now in Jesus. I command that muscle of the heart to begin to function properly in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You don't lay your head on your pillow, then you hear your heart that boom, 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 boom. Amen. That's the enemy trying to tear, trying to put fear in your heart, trying to make you try to make you just give up. But God let me tell you right now that your heart, though it's caused you trouble, yet it is healed in Jesus' name. It is healed right now in Jesus' name. No more irregular heartbeats. No more irregular heartbeats right now in Jesus' name. Oh, shade it about Kara Basse. Oh, shade it about Kara. Blood pressure, blood pressure right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak to the high blood pressure. I speak to the low blood pressure in the name of Jesus. I command the blood pressure return to normal right now in the name of Jesus. Blood pressure return to normal right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory shade it about Kara. I so say I just heard in my spirit disease in the blood system. Disease in the blood system. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the blood system. I speak to the blood system in the name of Jesus. I speak to the arteries of the heart and of the blood system. And I command the blood system to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. I praise you and I glorify you for it in Jesus' name. Oh, Rabba, Santa, Rabba, Kete, Rabakai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Sete, Rabaki. Oh, Sete, Rabaki, Rabakai. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I keep hearing kidney, 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 kidney. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the kidneys. I speak to the kidneys. And I command those kidneys to begin to function properly in the name of Jesus. I command those kidneys to begin to function properly. I release right now by faith your healing power into the kidneys. Into the kidneys in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, right now. Glory to God. Resurrection power, flow through that kidney right now in the name of Jesus. I release that miracle working power right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Panquish. Panquish. In the name of Jesus. Dong the race among the Rasa Rada Baki. Oh, Sande de Kitty. Oh, Shonde, Ela Goro Songo del Na. Yea, Kate Tana, Bade, the Bakonde de Say. Oh, ya, ta, ta, te ki. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was just a light, it was a light condition from the beginning concerning the Panquish. It was a light condition concerning the Panquish. But then, you went to the doctor, and the doctor, he escalated it, and he, and he gave you medicines that made your pancreas even worse than what it was, and now you are on, you're on full, uh, uh, you're, you, you, you're, you have to put the insulin in your body now because of what the doctor did. They messed you up. Instead of helping you, they messed you up, and now God is telling you right now, if you can believe, if you can believe right now, your pancreas will be restored now in Jesus' name. The resurrection power will enter your pancreas right now in Jesus' name. And your insulin will return to normal. I don't know who I'm talking to. I just know what I'm hearing and I'm speaking what I'm hearing. In the name of Jesus, pancreas, be healed now. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, receive it. Receive it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, shout out, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Some do they say, My Rabba Kosa Tarabaki. Do Rabasa. Thank you, Rabasa. Shake it in the Bakai. 
Someone has an eating disorder. Eating disorder. Eating disorder. And it's causing you to gain weight. Weight, weight, weight. Eating disorder. Amen. You don't know when you get enough. You don't know when to quit. Oh, she la Mmm. My God. Oh, glory to God. This is heavy, bro. This is heavy. Oh, say kid la Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Father, that you would regulate the metabolism. Regulate the metabolism. Help them to understand when they are had enough, when their body had enough. Yes. Father, I rebuke that gluttonous spirit. I rebuke that gluttonous spirit. You will not take this person life through eating in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that eating disorder right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. Now, Father, let the metabolism turn around right now. Right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Someone is listening to me right now, and you know this God is talking to you right now, just receive it. If it's for a loved one, that loved one not able to understand, receive it for your loved one. Lay your hand upon your loved one right now that is going through these changes. Lay your hand upon them right now, and by the name, and in the name of Jesus Christ, release your faith for that person right now, in Jesus' name. And I declare miracle, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. I, I command that goodness spirit to come out. I command it to come out now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. Yes, yes. That prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, I release that anointed now. I release that anointed now. In the name of Jesus. Mangrose. Mangrose. Be healed now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Spirit, you leave now. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, I release your anointing to reverse that what the enemy has done. Be healed. There it is. Receive it now. Receive it now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There it is. Woo, glory to God. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The devil going to say it didn't work. You just have to say, I am healed. I've been free. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. That's right. You just have to stand your ground because God has done it and that's all you need to know. God has done it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. See, when you acknowledge it, you say, God, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. And I know that work was for me. I receive it and I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we're going to... She had a Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Oh, silly. Mangroso mong derece mangrasi. I carandroso doro borande ela. Tandoroso koto no makaya. De nande le chiki to lobo ko. Ho, ho, ho. Mande. To. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. For I say to my children today, as I have sent my son, 
And as he laid his life down for you, I declare unto you this day that they that believe and receive will be made free. Will be made free. For I will not allow my word to fall to the ground. For I will perform that which I have spoken, yes. said the Lord. Amen. Not one word will fail. Praise Only believe. Only believe. The sickness that you're experiencing is not from me. It is the work of the enemy. And as I have spoken it, I have sent my word and I have healed them and deliver them from their destruction. When well, you are one of them that my word came to. Receive your healing now, said the Lord. Receive it by faith. And you will know that I have spoken. Because your sickness that you are experiencing will go. It will go. And you'll never experience it again. Not in this life. Nor in the life to come. For in me there is no sickness. In me. There is no diseases. For in me there is life. And life forevermore. I am alive. And I am working on your behalf. Right now. With my resurrection power. So be, be healed now. And be resurrected from your spirit of infirmity. And be free from it. Today. In Jesus name. I declare it. I decree it. So be it done now. Amen. Glory to God. So be it. Mm. Glory. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Someone to deal with paral paral is like paralyzed. You had a stroke or something. You paralyzed. And I see muscles. I see those muscles right now. God is starting to, God is starting to. Restore the muscles and the nerves. Oh, glory to God. I saw it so vivid. I saw it so vivid. I see the muscles and the nerve right now. God is touching them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And that where you was where you where you couldn't uh, move your limbs, right now your limbs is beginning to receive strength. Begin to receive strength. Amen. I saw the sinew, the muscles. And I saw Be healed in Jesus' name. And I know there's none of y'all in here like that. But I'm talking to someone. Amen. I'm talking to someone. And if you know someone, you know someone. I don't know if anybody else knows someone. But when you get to that person, lay your hand upon that person. You, the hearer of this word, Lay your hand upon that person. It may be your loved one. It may be your, someone that you love. Amen. Lay your hand upon that person. And release this importation I'm releasing upon you now. Release this importation that I'm releasing upon you now. Receive it. Receive it. And receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, shit. Whoo, glory. Mm. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, thank you. Now, use that impartation and impart it to your loved one. Impart it to your loved one. God said it. Who I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. God said it. Now, just do it. Don't be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer, Lord. Honor God, and God will honor you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Praise you. God, when I get in this vein, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to get out sometimes. But I know I got to. <laughs> I'm flowing, huh? I know it, but that's the side point. It's time to quit. <laughs> My God, my God, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God want to heal somebody's lungs. God want to heal somebody. Lay your hand on your lungs. Wherever they are. Whoever I'm talking to, lay your hands on your lungs. And they right here, right? Right in here? Lungs? Up here? Up in here? Lay your hands on your lungs. Wherever they are. Lay your hands on your lungs right now in Jesus' name. Lay your hands on your lungs right now in Jesus' name. Father, you're healing lungs right now. You're healing lungs right now. You're driving out that disease. God, I rebuke that curse. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. I rebuke that curse right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, say KT. Asthma. Hear the word of the Lord. Go in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you. Now go from that lungs in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. Yeah. 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 There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Jesus' name. That spirit is gone. Now don't receive it no more. Don't receive it no more. Don't receive it no more. Asthma attack you when you was weak. And now that you're strong, God wants you to receive your healing and remain and keep your strength. Stay strong. Stay strong. Stay strong. Stay strong. Jesus. Jesus. We love you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I sense the anointing starting to lift now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. And, God, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Somebody's relationship is in trouble. <laughs> you have trouble. You have a problem with, with your relationship. You have relationship issues. And the Lord is saying right now, you're both in the wrong. You're both in the wrong. If both of you repent to me, said the Lord, if both of you humble yourself and repent to me, and then look at one another and repent to each other, he said that I will cause a healing to begin to flow into both of your hearts that will bring about the restoration. That will bring about the restoration. Because you both was in the wrong, said the Lord. And not one is right. But if you both repent to me and then to one another, I will begin the restoration, said the Lord. So repent and turn back to me and I will return back to you. Cleanse your hands and return to me without sin. Thank you, Father, for restoration. Restore that relationship. Restore that relationship. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Whoa, yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Man of God, you got anything the Lord want to say? I'm just enjoying. You enjoy? <clears throat> How about you? The Lord say anything to you? The Lord say anything to you, Brother Murphy, Minister Murphy? Okay. Amen. I'm talking to the preachers. Hallelujah. My God, I'm coming.
Let's go ahead and take our offering up, folks. <laughs> I'm going to stop it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take our offering. <clears throat> Hallelujah! Mm. The Bible said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall be given to your bosom. With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. He that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. But God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. And you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Amen. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Everything that God wants to do in your life, it, it all, it, this, this, this is a part of it right here. It has to do with how obedient you are in this area of your finances. If when you're obedient in this area, you could be, God, God will use you in many areas. He can break, He can do a lot of work in your life. But when you're not obedient in this area, you're going to be disobedient in other areas. Amen. So if you listen to it by the internet, you want to sow a seed, you can go to my website, MaverickMinistries.com. Or you want to mail it in, your P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. You may mail it to uh, Library Ministries or New Life in Christ Jesus. Amen. New Life in Christ Jesus. And we love you. We thank God for you. Remember, we pray continually for our supporters. You always in our prayers. We know that God is going to do a work in your life, in your family life, even in your health. And because you support us, you are constantly in our prayers. You come under this healing anointing. Amen. You come under this healing anointing and you will, and as you continue to walk in obedience, you're going to find out that your health is going to get better and better and better. Amen. Why? Because of the anointing that's upon this ministry. We believe that because we see many people have come to this ministry and God has touched them. God has blessed them. Amen. And they walked away healed, delivered, and set free. You can walk away healed and delivered and set free too. Amen. Just be faithful in the little things. This finance is a little thing because God can put finance in your hand. That is nothing for God to do. But you be obedient concerning it. That's what your issue is. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and run it over to me and give it to your bosom. Father, in the name of Jesus. As we have received this offering right now, Father, we bless this offering and we sanctify it, Father. And we declare, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will cause it to be multiplied back into our lives. Though we are given it our Father, it will never leave our future. We say, Father, it shall come back. Good measure, press down and shake together. And run it over, shall men give it to our bosom. Father, I, I, I thank you, Father, for bonuses, raises. I thank you, Father, for, for new income, new streams of income. I thank you, Father, that, oh, God, oh, go shake the other box. Father, stocks, stocks, stocks. Somebody dealing with stocks, stocks, stocks. Someone stocked about to hit the high peak, and you, you're going to need to cash it in very soon, very soon. Because God, it's about to raise it, and then it's going to drop. So get it when it gets high. Get it when it gets high, and you'll not lose. Father, I thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and praise for it. Amen. Amen. Are you dealing with stocks? No. Who are you dealing with stocks? Bitcoins. Huh? Bitcoins. You you dealing with stocks? No, he's not. Bitcoins. That, that, and that, and that, and that's similar to stocks, just a different, different name? Anyway, whatever. It's for whoever. Amen. Glory to God. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord your life, right now I'm going to give you the opportunity to do so. The Lord loved you right where you are. Remember, I've been to the tomb, and he's not in the tomb, he's risen. And right now, he wants to show himself strong on your behalf. On your behalf. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, or maybe you have, but you backslid, you got away from the things of God, and God is giving you an opportunity right now to return to him. He said, return to me, and I will return unto you. Amen. 
as he said in the book of Malachi. And as we pray this prayer right now, and if this fit you, whether you come to the Lord for the very first time, or whether you rededicate your life to the Lord, and let it be according to your purpose of saying it. But say it with all your heart. Say it because you mean it. Don't say it because I'm asking you to. Say it because you mean it so that God can hear your request. And when he hear you, your request is granted. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And that you gave your life for my sin. And today, I confess my sin. And I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right now, the angels in heaven are rejoicing because of you and glory to God. You are a new creature created in Christ Jesus unto good work. Father, I pray for everyone that said that prayer. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the kingdom of God will begin to make itself known to their hearts like never before. That they will come to a place in you, Father, where they will begin to experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that everything that the devil is meant for, even all the confusion, Father, will begin to come to a halt right now in Jesus' name. And God, they begin to experience your goodness and your mercies, for your mercies are renewed daily. And we give you all the glory and all the praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. If you're here today you need prayer, I pray for you right now. Anyone need prayer, I pray for you right now. Glory to God. Everybody got prayed for all that one? Oh, yeah. Good. Now, open your Bible one more time with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Those of you that are going to be taking communion with us today, we ask you to turn your Bible with us to 1 Corinthians. If you don't have your communion elements yet, go get them now. I almost forgot about that. First Corinthians chapter 11. And read verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Let's judge ourselves right now. And, we, and uh, we're going to have a moment of silence. We're going to judge ourselves. And while we judge ourselves, Pastor, pass, go, pass out the elements. Thank you, Father.
couldn't give Dale one. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We all going to eat together. We just wait for Pastor Oka to get back. She let out a little bit of water on my On our members, they want to come in because they've been dealing with a cold. And so he said, just be safe. I'd rather stay out of my truck. Can you get it over, sir? Did you, did you get your... Yeah. Brent, let me have that when you take this one. I have, I have another one. Can you another one? Yeah, this one will be cool. This one's ready. Go ahead and take that one out here. That's all right. We know how to do it. We've been doing it for a while. Amen, amen, amen. There we go, right here. There we go. Okay, so now, in the name of Jesus, this is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. And as I look at this now, it doesn't look that much, but when I bless it and when I sanctify this, it's going to be transformed from its common use unto the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I hold this up before you now, I bless this. I sanctify this element of the communion. And Father, as we partake of this, Father, there's healing in the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us break. Let us partake. Receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we receive right now divine health and healing. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, we receive strength in every organ of our bodies. Thank you, Father. Your word is not going to fall to the ground. Your word is alive and healthy healing to all our flesh. We receive it now in Jesus' name. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary. Amen. The, they pierced him in the side. Now came from his body blood and water. The blood for your redemption. And as we partake of this cup, God is saying, I have redeemed you from the curses of the law. And I've set you free to serve me in every capacity of your life. So as you partake of this, Father, I bless it now. I sanctify this element of the vine. And Father, let it be transformed right now from its common use to its spiritual purpose. We receive it as the blood of Jesus Christ. And as we partake of it, Father, we declare that we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we say so. And in the name of Jesus, let us partake now. Father, we thank you. It was the blood. It was the blood that washed us and made us clean. We thank you for the blood. Praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For he reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its 
the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Father, we thank you for this service today. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. Father, we pray for those that are with us right now by the internet, God. We ask you, Father, that you would just minister to their heart, that you would touch them, that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them to be everything that you created them to be. Father, and as we end this service, we will not leave your presence, because we will meet here again tonight at 630. Father, your resurrection power will minister tonight to your people, and we give you glory in advance of what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Until the night, 630. God bless you. This is Pastor Larry. Have a blessed day. Resurrection Day. Bye-bye.